Hey you guys, welcome to another episode of the Entrepreneur Bootcamp Podcast. Today we're diving into email marketing. I'm going to show you how you can leverage email marketing to promote and nurture your leads to hopefully close them and get them to take the desired outcome that you want them to take. This webinar will go over how you go about researching your target audience, how you can send manual email campaigns to your email subscribers, and then how you can set up automated email sequences I'll also show you how you can segment your audience and I'll do all this using the powerful tools of artificial intelligence. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Did you know that over a million new businesses launch each year, yet nearly 40% fail in their first year and 80% within five? I'm Derek Schmidt and I don't want you to become another statistic. That's why I started the Entrepreneur Bootcamp Podcast. I'm going to use real world experience and straightforward advice to help you navigate through the rough waters of entrepreneurship. Whether you're drafting your first business plan or aiming for new heights, this is your toolkit for however you define success. Let's dive in. All right, so before you start thinking about your email marketing campaigns, it's important for you to understand who is your target audience. So I've done a whole video on this, but you need to have three to five target audience personas. Now, what is a target audience persona? Sometimes you hear them called ideal customer profiles or customer personas. The terms are interchangeable, but they basically mean the same thing. It is a document that helps you find out what is this specific person's job title? What are their pain points? Where do they spend their time online and offline? What kind of information do they seek and how do they make buying decisions? Ultimately, you should have three to five ideal target audience personas because what speaks to me may not speak to somebody else. I may have different interests. I may make purchasing decisions differently than somebody else. So you want to try to have as many of these as you can so that you can speak to each type of person. All right, now I want to look at the sales funnel because email marketing does still play a role in the sales funnel. And what you see here is a graphic of the sales funnel. And in it, we have the four different stages. That is the awareness stage when prospects become aware of your brand and what products, services you offer. The interest stage, these are prospects that know about your brand, but they need more nurturing before they consider working with you or purchasing from you. The consideration stage, these are the prospects that are almost ready to convert, but they need a little bit more social proof, a little more handholding or more information about what sets your company apart from other options. And then finally, the decision stage. This is where you convert prospects with an offer, incentive, or something similar. Now, if you look at the sales funnel, the different stages of the sales funnel, this is typically the services or the types of marketing tactics you're going to use within each stage of the sales funnel. So in the awareness stage, you've got your PR, your radio, TV, print advertising, your word of mouth, online ads, email marketing, pay-per-click, et cetera. And the consideration stage, this is where you're probably going to utilize like your social media ads, your reviews, maybe driving traffic to your blog, any other media, direct mail. For the purchasing stage, you've got the e-commerce, if you own a retail store or just your website, like the contact form or request a consultation. Then you've got the retention part of the sales funnel. This is your community forum, your frequently asked questions, your knowledge base. And finally, the advocacy. These are promotions, your blog, your social networks, and again, your email marketing or your newsletters. So before we get into actually creating the email marketing, uh, I want to go over two different content writing frameworks for you. The first one is the Problem Agitate Solution Framework. It's PAS for short. It's a valuable framework used for creating new marketing copy ideas. Basically, this framework boils down to... Uh, Problem, this is where you mirror their problem in the copy that describes exactly what they're feeling. Then you've got the agitate. This is where you agitate their problem and remind them just how annoying it is to have this problem. And then you present a solution to the problem that includes what is it your company is offering? How can you get them to their aha moment? Now, in an actual example, this is where you can probably recognize this PAS framework, Problem Agitate Solution Framework out in the wild, right? So this is a screenshot for anybody who's following along on the video of two different blog posts. And I use this to demonstrate where in those blog posts, the author is using the PAS framework. So you can see the title or right at the very beginning is generally where the problem is going to go. And then within the body content of the blog posts, 
or email body, if we're relating this to email marketing, is where you agitate the problem. And then finally, the solution, generally where the call to action is going to be. Okay, so it generally does follow that structure. It's problem, agitate, solution. Now, how does this apply to email marketing? Using that same methodology, let's look at this through uh, email marketing sequence. So you can see here the first email somebody may get when they subscribe to our email newsletter or this specific sequence, email one is going to show the problem, right? Maybe they get that right away upon signing up. Email two is going to agitate the problem. Maybe this is the second email they get one day later, three days later, a week later. And then the third email they get is going to be how we uniquely solve the problem. So it's that same problem agitate solution. Then maybe they'll get that third email a few days later after receiving the second one. But the goal here is that all of this is automated and it speaks exactly to their pain point and it positions you on how you can uniquely solve their problem. So let's look at this from an example. And I'll use Design Loud as the, uh, the guinea pig here. So the problem, I would say, you know that SEO, digital marketing, and web design are important to your business, but you don't have time or expertise to understand how they work together. So the next part here is I'm going to agitate that problem. Hey, we get it. That's why we have a team of experts who can make sure that all parts of your online presence are working together for maximum impact. Our team will help you create an online strategy using proven data-driven methods so you'll always know what works best for your customers and your bottom line. Finally, this is where I present the solution. Let us take care of everything from SEO to pay-per-click advertising to social media so that you can focus on building relationships with the customer in an efficient manner without any wasted time or money. Now let's take a look at the second framework. This stands for awareness, interest, desire, actions. Okay, this is the ADA framework, A-I-D-A -A for short. And this framework when applied to an example, we go through attention. Your customers are online and they're looking for you, but how do you get them to find your business? And then I lead into the interest section. We help businesses like yours rank higher in search engines so that more people can find your website. And we make sure it's optimized with the right keywords, content, and images so that people will stay on your site for longer. With our help, you'll be able to build relationships with customers in an efficient manner without any waste of time or money. Now I'm going to lead into the desired part. You don't need a degree in marketing to know that digital marketing is important to the success these days. But if you want the best results possible, then hire us. We have years of experience working with clients just like you, and we know what it takes and what works best when it comes to SEO, PPC campaigns, social media ads, web design, and more. Let us show you how easy it is to grow your business through data-driven strategies today. And finally, I'll lead into the action that I want them to take. Click this ad now for a free consultation from one of our experts about how we can help grow your business using data-driven strategy. So these two frameworks are going to be extremely relevant to you as you start planning out your email marketing campaigns. Now I'd like to switch gears and I'd like to get into how we can use ChatGPT and AI to help us plan and write these campaigns for us to the point where we can go through and make some final edits, add some images or some videos, and then finally set these up and let them loose. All right, so to get started, head over to your favorite AI tool. For this example, I will be using ChatGPT. And when you're on the ChatGPT website, go ahead to the prompt field. Now, the first thing I'm gonna walk you through is identifying your target audience. Again, there's a whole video on this, so I won't spend too much time on how I engineered this prompt, but I'll just paste in the prompt here or if you're part of our free online community, of course, you've got the chat bot that you can use, the bot that I've built, which does all of this for you. I'm gonna paste my prompt in and I'm going to replace the placeholder and I'm gonna say I'm in the digital marketing business and I am specifically looking for people with the location of Wilmington, North Carolina. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and wait for this to provide me with some information on my target audience. So that just completed. I've got about five different personas here that ChatGPT has helped me create specific to my business industry, digital marketing in Wilmington, North Carolina. And I won't spend too much time on this. If you've already created your personas, feel free to skip over this step. But my five personas, I've got small business owner, Sarah, as well as all of her demographic information. I've got e-commerce entrepreneur, David, 
I have medical practice manager, Emily, and I've got home services business owner, Mike. I've got nonprofit director, Lisa. And then at the very end here, I've got a summary of the different pain points and emotional connections that I can use when communicating with them. Now, as I was teaching this webinar, somebody raised a really good question. How do we know that this information is accurate? So the names themselves are fictitious. They're made up avatar names, but the information itself is pretty accurate. And when somebody asks that question, I just asked ChatGPT, tell me where you got this information, including the specific sources that can be used to cite this information. And what I found out was that ChatGPT had scanned the U.S. Census Bureau, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, PEW Research Center, Statista, marketing research articles and journals, and local business directories and networking organizations. And it did include all of the sources that it cited to create these target audience personas. Extremely valuable here. And this is generally the first step in any of the webinars that I do when it comes to digital marketing, because you have to know how to communicate with these different individuals. All right, so this is a really good first step. We've got an idea on who our target audience is and why I led with this is because as I start chatting with ChatGPT in this specific chat thread, I wanted to be able to go back and reference this information as it starts creating the content for my email marketing. But before I get to that step, I wanna paste in my next prompt here. And this is basically where I'm just telling ChatGPT, hey, you're an expert copywriter with familiarity on writing copy that converts and email marketing funnels and strategies. So I've got a prompt here that I've pasted and I'm going to give it my business name and my website because I'm going to ask it in just a moment to tell me what my brand's tone of voice is and writing style so that as it starts creating this content for me, it is creating it in a way that sounds like me and embodies our brand's personality. So I'll go ahead and hit enter and wait for it to analyze the content of the website. So as we can see, it's finished, it's analyzed my business. It's got key insights that it can use and now it is ready for my next prompt. I'm going to go ahead and paste this prompt here where I asked ChatGPT, create a brand identity and messaging outline based on my company. What this is going to do is make sure that my messaging and my branding, all the communication is consistent with how we already communicate out in the digital world. And so you could see here where it's coming up with our brand overview, website industry. It's got a really good idea on our mission statement, our vision statement, and our core values. It has referenced our target audience. And most importantly, and why I pulled it into this specific chat thread is it's analyzing our brand tone of voice as engaging and confident, friendly and approachable, professional yet playful, empowering and encouraging, transparent, and honest, energetic, and dynamic. It actually did a better job at describing our brand tone of voice than I could have done. So well done to the engineers there. Now I want to have ChatGPT create a story brand board using Donald Miller's story brand script based on everything it knows about my business right now. So if you're unfamiliar with Donald Miller's story brand, I highly encourage you check it out. There are certified story brand experts all over the U.S. that can help you really articulate and put this together. And this is by no means a replacement for what they would do. But where this is valuable is this is going to help with positioning you as the mentor in this example to help your customers or your client get to that aha moment. So Donald Miller's story brand, it basically says that every story from the beginning of time has some core elements where there's an individual and they're faced with a situation, they need mentorship or a teacher, and that teacher helps guide them through either a success moment or the failure moment. And ideally we're not getting anybody to the failure, but I'm gonna paste this prompt in here using the brand identity and message crafting section above create a story brand board using the Donald Miller story brand framework. All right, so that just completed. I've got here the story brand framework for Design Loud. The first one being the character who's the hero is the small business owners in Wilmington NC, primarily in home services, e-commerce, and medical industries, grossing over a million annually with at least five employees. The problem, the external problem they face, they're struggling to navigate the complexities of digital marketing and achieving consistent growth. The internal problem, 
They're feeling overwhelmed and frustrated by ineffective marketing strategies and competition and the philosophical problem belief that every business deserves a fair chance to succeed and grow with the right marketing support. The guide, who is the guide? It would be us design loud. As far as empathy, we understand the challenges of growing a business in a competitive digital landscape and the authority. We have a proven track record with successful client projects, testimonials, and industry experience. The plan that we use as part of the framework, the discovery call, a customized strategy, implementation, monitoring and optimization, and reporting. As far as the call to action, there's the direct call to action, which is scheduled a free consultation. And then there's the transitional call to action. Download our free digital marketing guide. We help them avoid failure by uh, avoiding potential pitfalls, missing out on potential customers due to poor online presence, losing market share to competitors with stronger digital strategies, and wasting marketing budget on ineffective tactics. We help them get to their success moment by achieving increased brand visibility, customer engagement, and business growth. By experiencing peace of mind, knowing your uh, marketing is in expert hands and celebrating measure of results and a thriving business. And as you can see down below, it has put that together in a very nice story brand board that I can use for this context in my emails, but also I can copy this and paste it in a document that I circulate through my business so that each employee of mine, each customer, everybody is very clear on what role we serve while working with our clients. So the next prompt that I want to paste here, I'm going to have ChatGPT based on all this information that's created for me. I wanted to go ahead and start creating some email marketing campaigns. So the prompt that I say is give me a list of general email campaigns I can use to keep my subscribers engaged that provide 80% value and 20% promotional material. I want these campaigns to be more generalized, but extremely valuable. I will refer to these later in instructions as general email campaigns. I'm going to hit enter and wait for chat GPT. I can see that it has completed the instructions from the prompt. So I have a list of general email campaigns. I've got a monthly newsletter. Um, the value content could include industry news, tips and tricks, latest trends in digital marketing and success stories. As far as the promotional content, highlights of new services or special offers. I could also offer an educational series and it goes on to explain what the value content can include, like step-by-step -step guides, tutorials, best practices in areas like SEO, social media marketing, and website design, as well as what promotional content I can use there. And that is encouraging signups for webinars or workshops. The third option it gives is case studies and success stories. These are in-depth analysis of how specific clients achieve their goals with our services. And the call to action would be to book a consultation to discuss personalized strategies. As far as tips and tricks, uh, quick actionable tips for improving digital marketing efforts. Promotional content would include a soft promotion of related services or tools that can help implement the tips. Industry insights. These are insights on market trends, emerging technologies, and predictions for the future. Promotional content, the special offers on new services that align with the trends. I could focus on tools and resources, Q&A sessions, client spotlights, event announcements, seasonal content, behind the scenes content, and customer feedback and surveys. So this has done a really good job on giving me an idea of what kind of content I can put out on a monthly basis or as I'm putting these manual email marketing campaigns together, but I wanna take this a step further. So I'm gonna paste the following prompt in. For each general email marketing campaign you suggested, I want you to go ahead and create the campaigns for me. Your campaigns will reference the subject line Write the body of the content of the email using my tone of voice and writing style from my website and provide what ideas, what type of creative to include, such as images or videos, and what primary call to action we want them to take. Now that that has completed, I've got about 12 different email marketing campaigns that I could send. The first one being subject line, stay ahead with our monthly marketing insights. It's gone on to create the content of the email for me, highlighting what they can expect to receive, such as industry news, tips and tricks, success stories, and what's new. It gives me an idea for the call to action I can use, as well as some other creative examples, which I could use for graphics, summarizing the latest industry news, a short video clip with SEO tips, or before after images of a client's website overhaul. The second email campaign it wrote for me was an educational series. 
with the subject line Master Digital Marketing or their step-by-step guides. It created the body content for me, as well as suggested upcoming webinar topics that I can use and a call to action and the creatives. And then it's gone on to give me the case studies and success stories, campaigns, the tips and tricks, the industry insights, the tools and resources, and the Q&A sessions, spotlights, event announcements, and more. This is really great information because it's taken a lot of the work from me that would generally take up a significant amount of time to really make sure that I can put this in, proofread, and, and then just fill in the blanks. But now I want to ask ChatGPT to go ahead and organize this into a content calendar for me for the next 12 months. So my prompt, now I want you to provide me with a calendar to organize when I should send each general campaign. Your calendar should account for the next 12 months. You should tell me what day, date, and time to send the campaign. As I start scrolling down here, I can see that it has already started with the calendar. Month one would be the monthly newsletter. I should send that out on Tuesday, the first Tuesday of the month at 10 a.m. The second week, I should send on Thursday, which would be the second Thursday of the month at 10 a.m. That should be the educational series. For week three, case studies and success stories, that should be sent out on Tuesday at 10 a.m. And then for week four, tips and tricks, that should be sent out on Thursday at 10 a.m. You can see where that goes on through month two, month three, and month four, and so on, so that I know exactly which email campaign to send, what day, and what time. And the beautiful part about this is that I didn't have to research and crawl the internet about statistically, on average, what are the best days and times to send my email newsletter campaigns. ChatGPT has already done that for me, so I have a really good idea on the best days and times to send these out. And now I have an idea on the type of email campaign that I'm sending in terms of the category and the content. So now let's take a look at how we can start to segment our users. While in the same ChatGPT thread here, I want you to paste in this prompt. Now I want you to tell me how to best segment my email subscribers based on the target audience information and the stages of the sales funnel. So ChatGPT is suggesting that I can segment my email subscribers based on demographic segmentation. This would include things like the industry, so home services, e-commerce, or medical, business size, location, income, role. Or I could segment them on behavioral segmentation. This is like the frequency of interactions with emails and website visits and social media engagement, maybe past purchases, or the types of content that this subscriber generally interacts with and engages with. I can segment them on psychographic segmentation. So this is specific challenges that they face, like struggles with SEO or social media engagement or website optimization. I can segment them based on where they are in the sales funnel. So are they in the awareness stage, consideration stage, decision stage, or retention stage? And then it goes on to give me some segmentation strategies. So in the first example, awareness stage segmentation, some of the characteristics that would be used would be new subscribers, high website bounce rates, initial interest in educational content, the content strategy that I would use to send these subscribers or this segment, would be educational series, industry insights, and tips and tricks. It gives me some example campaigns that I can send. Then it goes on to tell me the consideration stage segmentation. So I can use the uh, subscribers who engage with case studies, product demos, or in-depth guides. The types of content I would send them would be detailed case studies, success stories, and comparison guides. It goes on to tell me some example campaigns I can send. And then the decision stage segmentation, these are subscribers who frequently visit the pricing pages or download resources or engage with our sales content. I could send them personalized offers, product demos, and free consultations. It gives some examples of the campaigns that it already created from above that I can use here. And then the retention stage segment. These are existing clients, frequent purchasers, high email open rates, I could provide them with loyalty rewards, exclusive contents, and upsell opportunities. And again, I've got an idea of the different campaigns that I can send there. Now, if I wanted to segment this audience based on the industry, I've got an example of the home services business owner segment, as well as who that target is, what stage of the funnels they belong to, and what campaigns to send. And it goes on to tell me about the e-commerce entrepreneur segment and the medical practice manager segment. As far as implementation tips, 
It's telling me that I can use specific email marketing platforms and it gives some suggestions there like MailChimp, HubSpot, ActiveCampaign. I would want to do some personalization within these email platforms. Of course, I would want to measure and track the analytics and I would likely want to do some A-B split testing so I can see which version of the campaigns get opened and interacted with the most. So this was a really good next step. Let's switch gears here because that was all based on us sending manual email campaigns out. So maybe, you know, once a week, somebody from my team signing in, copying and pasting this content into the email marketing platform and scheduling that to be sent or sending it right away. This next prompt here, I want to walk you through how you can create an automated email marketing sequence. So I'm pasting the following prompt here, create a hierarchical ordered list of new email marketing campaigns that we can use at each stage of the sales funnel to keep leading this audience in segment further down the sales funnel. Your list should consider the different audience personas and speak directly to their pain points. Consider how they purchase and more to make it hyper-personalized. Consider using either the problem agitates content copywriting framework or the attention, interest, desire, action, copywriting framework. Include examples of which stage of the sales funnel this campaign belongs, which segmented customer lists to send to, the subject lines, body email outlines, the suggestive calls to action. I will refer to these in later instructions as segmented automated email campaigns. Now I have a very detailed list of the segmented automated email campaigns that I can use based on the different stages of the sales funnel. So in the awareness stage, the first campaign I would send would be the welcome series. It tells me exactly what segment to target. So this would be all new subscribers. It tells me the framework that I'm using. So I'm using the ADA framework here. The subject line is welcome to the design loud community, the body email outline. It goes over the attention, interest, desire, and action. So attention would be welcome to the design loud family with a personalized placeholder of their name. Interests. We're excited to have you to help you transform your digital marketing. Here's what you can expect from us. The desire part of this framework, get access to industry insights, expert tips, and exclusive offers designed to grow your business. The action side would be check out our latest blog post to get started with the call to action, visit our blog. The second campaign that they would receive would be an introduction to our services. And of course, I've got the segment, the framework used, the subject line, the body email, and the call to action. Now in the consideration stage, the third campaign I would send would be the educational series. This would be SEO basics. I've got the segment, framework, subject, body, and call to action for that. The fourth campaign would be the case study. This would be based on the home services success story. So it's telling me what segment to use, what framework, subject line, body email, and call to action. And then I've got the decision stage. Campaign would be the free consultation offer. Campaign six would be the limited time discount. And then in the retention stage, I've got the client spotlight. This is campaign seven. Campaign eight would be the exclusive webinar for clients. And I've got a sample of this as a hierarchical ordered list so that it's easy to digest and start to put together. Now I want to use the following prompt to have ChatGPT help me create the content for these campaigns. So in my prompt box, I'm going to type for each segmented automated email marketing campaign you suggested, I want you to create the campaigns for me. Your campaigns will reference the subject line, Write the body content of the email using my tone of voice and writing style from my website. Provide ideas for what type of creative to include, such as images or videos, and what primary call to action we want them to take. So ChatGPT has just finished writing out these different campaigns I would be using in my automated email marketing sequence. I'll go over the first one here, the welcome series. Of course, it's got the subject line, welcome to the design of community. The body content reads, hey, subscriber name, which is just a placeholder variable that I would use to dynamically insert the person's name. Welcome to the Design Loud family. We're thrilled to have you on board. At Design Loud, we're all about helping businesses like yours thrive in the digital world. Here's what you can expect from us. Industry insights will help you stay ahead of the curve with the latest trends and updates in digital marketing. Expert tips, get actionable tips and tricks to enhance your marketing efforts. Exclusive offers. Enjoy special promotions and discounts tailored just for you. Ready to dive in? Start by clicking our latest blog post to start boosting your online presence. Cheers, the Design Lab team. 
Then it goes on to give me some creative ideas that I can use, like a welcome banner image, a GIF of a welcoming team, and link to a blog post or a compelling image. It also tells me the primary call to action that I should use here would be visit our blog. But as you can see from the other campaigns, for anybody who's following along in the video, you'll see that it's proceeded to create the other campaigns for me with the subject line, the body content, the creative ideas, and the primary call to actions. Now, I could stop here. I've got a really good start to be able to set up the manual email marketing campaigns, but also the automated email marketing campaigns, as well as how to segment my audience. Now, one thing I want to tell you is you can actually use ChatGPT to design this for you. So it will give you the HTML code and the CSS that you can then use to paste into a platform like MailChimp or HubSpot where it allows you to upload your own email marketing templates. You can have ChatGPT basically take the styles from your website and provide you with email marketing design that you can use as a template going forward. So I'm gonna paste the following prompt in. Now I want you to create an HTML template I can use in my email marketing platform as a reusable template to populate it with these campaigns. Your template should match the branding and design from my website and other marketing materials. I'll go ahead and hit enter and ChatGPT will start to provide me with HTML and CSS that I can use to copy and paste into a platform like HubSpot or MailChimp or Aweber or any other email marketing platform that allows you to basically copy code for your own design of a template. All right, ChatGPT just finished creating my HTML template that I can use to upload to MailChimp. And basically what it's done here is in the first section, it's created the actual email template, as I can see here from the HTML code, where it says email template. But then further down, it explains how I can use this template and integrate it within my email marketing platform. But it also gives me an example of this template using one of the email campaigns that ChatGPT has created for me. So now I just want to preview this template before I get into actually pasting and putting it into a platform like MailChimp or other email marketing platform. So to do that, I'll just click on the copy code here, which is what you would do to paste it into MailChimp. But for now, I'm just going to load the text editor. I'm going to paste that HTML code in exactly. And then when I go to save this, I'm going to save it as email marketing template because I just want to be able to look at it. But I'm going to make sure to type dot HTML because when I preview this, I want to preview it as uh, an actual HTML document, almost like a web page, because I want to see what the finished product's going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and click save there. So I can see here an example of this email marketing template that it has created for me. Now, of course, once I pull this over into MailChimp, I can click things like this broken image and replace it with an actual image here or replace our company name at the top with a logo. But this did a really good job at starting this for me so that I can go in and easily modify and edit this. So the last thing I want to do to wrap this up is I want to paste in the following prompt. Now I want you to provide me with detailed instruction on how to set up my audience segment and segmented automated email marketing campaigns using the platform MailChimp. And you would just replace MailChimp with whatever email marketing platform you are using. And this will give you detailed instructions on how you can set up the automated email marketing sequences in the chosen platform that you're using. So I can see the chat GPT is starting to provide me with step-by-step -step instructions on how I can create my audience segments directly in MailChimp and how to create my automated email campaigns directly in MailChimp. So this makes it specific to that platform as well as the recommendations that ChatGPT has provided to me. All right, so if you're stuck on all this or you don't wanna to have to bother with memorizing email marketing prompts or the prompts that I used during this webinar recording, I'd like to share with you that we built a custom GPT. It's a ChatGPT chatbot that basically pulls in all the prompts that I've used here today, as well as some of our own background and experience to make this extremely easy for you. And that is available for download on our free community, but you can get access to that once you click on the link. You would just click on the email marketing expert chatbot 
And from here, you can just type on uh, get started. And this chat bot will ask you what specifically you need help with based on how we engineered this specific custom GPT. So to get started, it will go through a series of some of the same questions that I started with in the beginning, which include what's the business name, the website, any details you may have on the target audience, product or services offered, and then the brand tone of voice. And once you complete this, it will ask you if you need help creating and segmenting your audience. Maybe you need ideas on how you can get more subscribers. So this will give you personalized recommendations based on your business, your industry, and your website on how you can grow your subscriber list. This will also help you with planning out your manual email marketing campaigns that you plan to send, as well as your automated email marketing sequences. So that chat bot, again, is available on our community and that will walk you through from start to finish, how you can organize and set up your email marketing campaigns and provide you with valuable information on how you can get people to subscribe to your email marketing newsletter. As always, thank you so much for joining me. If you found this episode valuable, please take a moment to like, share, leave a review on whatever platform you're receiving this information from because the algorithm will help suggest this to other entrepreneurs and business owners where this could potentially help them. Feel free to check out our website with entrepreneurbootcamppodcast.com and I look forward to catching you on the next episode. Hey, make sure you subscribe for more insights and if you like this episode, consider sharing it with a friend. Join our free community at entrepreneurbootcamppodcast.com and let's start building a great business together.